So I want to end uh, our last show before the new year with this article I wrote about in October of 2022 because to me this illustrates so many things about how I've come to see politics, how I want to do journalism, what kinds of conversations we want to have on this show, some of the things I think we've all been misled into thinking about. I wrote about a Brazilian politician named Cabo Daciola. And the context for this article is that my husband, who with whom I married for 17 years, with whom we're raising our children, um, is a member of Congress in Brazil with the left wing party. And at a campaign event in August, when he's running for re-election, the election was uh, in October this year, he began experiencing very severe abdominal pains. And he called me and told me about them. I told him to come home and rest. He rested, it got worse. He went to the ER. They immediately uh, hospitalized him in the ICU because he had extremely severe infections and inflammation of the gastrointestinal system. Um, it was life-threatening. He's been hospitalized for the last five months, sometimes getting better, sometimes getting worse. It's obviously been an extremely difficult time for my family, for our children. Um, Cabo Daciola is a, someone who became very well known in Brazil back in 2011 because he was a fighter fire who led a strike, a firefighters union strike in Rio de Janeiro. And as you can see from this photo, he's a good looking guy. He's very charismatic. He speaks very well. And that attracted a lot of media attention. It actually created a lot of support for the firefighter strike. He was very um, effective in advocating the cause of why firefighters were severely underpaid. I think they were getting $600 a month. It was, he wanted to raise or they wanted to raise to $900 a month, something like that. And he often spoke in religious terms about the need of society to take care of its poorest people, which in Brazil includes many public service workers, such as firefighters who obviously risk their lives for the safety of others. He became a star, a political star, and because he was defending a union, he became a left-wing hero. The left was so happy to finally have not a sociology professor or some kind of trust fund kid who decided to talk about poor people or poverty from as an abstraction, but an actual working class person, the Brazilian left has as much difficulty as Western leftist movements in attracting real life working class people. And he became a political star that he and joined the left and ran for Congress as part of the same left wing political party that my husband ended up joining. He won easily, he was elected to Congress and then immediately starting having serious conflicts with that party because like so many working class peoples, Cabo Daciola is very religious. He's an evangelical Christian. And as a result, he believes in uh, lots of things on social issues that are anathema to the left. He opposes, for example, same-sex marriage. He opposes abortion. He's spoken uh, of homosexuality as a sin. And it got to the point, especially once he said that he thought the Constitution should be amended to make it similar to the U.S. Declaration of Independence, that all rights emanate not from the state or the people, but from God, that the party could no longer tolerate him in their party, and he, the party expelled him. So the left finally had a working class hero, but because they decided he was essentially a bigot, he opposed same-sex marriage, he was widely accused of being someone who hates gay men and lesbians, who hates LGBTs, he ended up splitting from the left. He then ran for president. He was pretty successful given that he had no president, uh, no party support. And early this year, my husband left that party and they developed a real friendship. And I remember, you know, a month or so after um, my husband uh, was at an airport and he and Cabo were speaking, they both ended up missing their flight because they were in so much conversation. And he went to Twitter, my husband did, and posted a picture of them together and told what he thought was a funny story about how they were so enjoying each other's company that they ended up missing their flight. My husband was viciously attacked by the left for having anything to do with someone who obviously hates gay men like this. Why would my husband, a gay man, be willing to publicize his friendship or share a platform with somebody who hates gay men so much? Fast forward to the time that my husband gets hospitalized in August of 2022. It was in the middle of a political campaign. So there were a lot of politicians who wanted to 
publicly associate themselves with David, my husband, with me. We were obviously the source of a lot of public sympathy, as happens when you're facing a life-threatening illness. My husband's 37. People were obviously moved by that. And so my rule was, anytime a politician called and said they wanted to visit the hospital, visit David in the hospital, the rule was they couldn't publicize it or talk about it publicly. They couldn't post pictures. They couldn't talk about how they were visiting the hospital. And for most of them, the desire to visit David, as soon as I explained that rule, disappeared. But not for Cabo. From the very first week David was hospitalized, he was calling me constantly in order to ask how David was doing, to offer prayers, not in a uh, dogmatic way or a evangel evangelizing way, but in a very compassionate way. It was very comforting. He was choosing things to say as a human being, but also an evangelical that came from the Bible that were designed to provide comfort. He carefully chose them. And when he asked to go visit David, to pray with David, to pray for David, and I told him the rule, he was a Senate candidate at the time. He was running for Senate. He said, of course not. I have no interest in publicizing any of this. That's not why I'm going. And he ended up visiting David in the hospital constantly. And once the election was over, unlike most politicians who disappeared, Cabo continued to call me, ask how David was doing, uh, constantly gave me words of comfort and to my kids and to my family, and continues to visit David and pray with David and pray for David. And I just find it so ironic that if you go on the internet and mention his name, the left will tell you that this is a person who hates gay men deeply, hates gay men and lesbians, is an anti-LGBT bigot, and yet... All I've seen from him over the past five months at the most difficult time for our family is compassion and love and connection as human beings. And it really goes to show you that a lot of the people who go onto Twitter and post the right hashtags and rainbow flag emojis have no interest in David or how he's doing, no concern for him, including people who have worked alongside him for years. And yet the person who supposedly hates LGBT so much and is filled with bigotry and hatred has been one of the people most comforting and helpful to myself and my family, and I think to David as well, by going and visiting him and just having this very kind of genuine presence. And so this kind of story has happened to me over many times in the last 20 years. I'm probably someone who started off with a lot of caricatures about how people on the other side of whatever political or cultural or religious divide we were taught to observe and probably someone who shared those caricatures, who thought people on the other side were automatically evil. And stories like this really serve to remind, I think me and everyone that I share this story with, you probably have your own, that so often the reason we end up divided against each other and hating one another is because it serves the institutions of power for us to do so, for us to stay divided along these artificial lines of religion or politics or culture when in reality, I think human beings are fundamentally good. We have more in common with each other than we're often encouraged to recognize. And I think in large part, it's because power centers prosper and stay immune when our anger and our rage are directed at our neighbors instead of at them. Thanks for watching this clip from System Update. Catch our full shows for free live weekdays at 7 p.m. Eastern on Rumble and join our Locals community at greenwall.locals.com for all of my written journalism, exclusive after-show Q&As, and more.